So why trees? Beyond the usual raise up a forest and use it to make an amazing number of things, this is the south after all and we're really good at forestry, but what about the trees outside the forest? What about the trees in town? We're a bunch of tree-loving people over here at the Auburn Community Forestry Program, and we work hard to educate our citizens about their trees around their homes and in their towns. We notice that people tend not to think about their trees very much, but these trees are really very important. Most people don't think about trees. Usually people think trees are pretty and nice and say, yes, we'd like some. But they don't see trees as the important part of their cities and towns that they are. So we thought we'd have this little talk today. In our work, we often find ourselves having to answer that question, why trees? As in, can you really be talking to me about trees of all things? After all, cities have schools and sidewalks, asphalt and water lines, and there's probably another election and so on. It's hard to get around to the trees and how important they are to each of us, even our really small communities. Why trees seems like a really strange question to us, trees are what we do, but most people don't see the trees while they're working. So what we want to show everyone is just how important all the trees in the streets and in their yards are. Not just because they're a part of the environment, making oxygen, cooling the planet, breathing in all that CO2, but because they're important to people's lives and the health of our citizens and their communities. Let's start with why the trees got planted around in the first place. This is the U.S. of A. in the south. It's hot in the summertime. We all stick to the shade if possible. This wasn't any different for the people in history. Before air conditioning, tree-lined streets and shady lawns were needed as much as a family milk cow or hens for eggs. Without the shade, summer was suffering in places like the South. These days, we don't depend on the trees to keep us from suffering through the summer, but they're still keeping us cool. You see, every paved surface, every roof, every car and truck soak up heat and release it, making the general area lots hotter. They call this the urban heat island, and it's a serious problem. This means every air conditioner in town is working harder and costing more than an air conditioner out in the countryside. Trees combat this effect by catching sunlight and keeping those surfaces from heating up as much. Once again, tree shade saves us. Lower temperatures day and night make the town a nice place to live and give savings on cooling the entire community. And as long as we're talking about air conditioning, yard trees save quite a bit of money on that. A house with mature trees planted to the east and west of a home saves the owner's electricity on air conditioning by preventing the sun from heating the home as much. Research shows that homes shaded by large trees placed around the house to shade during the midday and afternoon may reduce as much as 58% of the electricity used for air conditioning. So shade is wonderful, but there's even more to it. It helps to think of trees as kind of like modern people's working animals. You know what it was like in the old days. Men plowing fields with oxen, carts pulled by horses, chickens laying eggs. We depended on those animals for everything we now go to the drive through for. These days we no longer have that team of oxen, but what we do have are trees. Trees are not only cooling us down with the shade, they're performing other important services quietly, unobtrusively, and without the need of payment. We don't often think of it, but trees are water managers. They deal with most of our water, from rainfall to drinking water. Each full-grown tree requires an amazing amount of water. A tree and all its roots and leaves have to remain completely soaked at all times. A big part of the bark of a tree is to keep the water inside from evaporating away. In fact, trees must take in and give off a steady stream of water. A mature pecan tree in a grove may run through 300 gallons of water on a hot day. So each and every time it rains, those trees take in massive amounts of water. As much as 30% or more of each rainfall. This is water that never goes down a drain, never has to be treated at public expense. In fact, towns that have lost lots of trees often find themselves installing more up-to-date drains and sewers to handle extra runoff. Trees also pretty effectively dry out the ground, not only by soaking up water, but also by making soil drain better with their root systems. You see, as tree roots grow, they create larger spaces within the soil that the water runs along and finally drains it down into the deep. Trees intercept rainfall and keep raindrops from hitting the soil as hard as they might have. This stops erosion, preventing silting of our streams and lakes. Nearly everyone in Alabama gets their drinking water from the rivers. Without the trees, 
cleaning that water up for drinking would be much more expensive. Let's also not forget that trees protect the health of our streams and lakes and ultimately the wetlands in the Gulf of Mexico. You see, the trees may live on the land, but they protect the quality and health of our waters. Let's move on to trees and money. It does cost money to plant trees and more money to maintain them properly. But having those trees around does save money, enough money to make it important to you. The shade does quite a bit more than cool the lawn. Trees shade pavements in town, preventing aging of that pavement by the sun. This is especially true for asphalt. The sun causes the pavements to expand and contract every day as it heats and cools. Add to that the effects of heat and ultraviolet rays cause the asphalt binding in the road to dry and powder, letting it erode away in the rain or the wind. Tree shade reduces this. Tree shaded streets can often go more than a decade longer than unshaded asphalt roadways. Those streets all have to lead somewhere else, not just home. Everybody has to buy stuff, so yeah, trees have something to do with business. A city runs on its businesses. A healthy town will have a mix of businesses and trees. City landscapes that have trees are more attractive to businesses and their customers. One of the stranger benefits of trees is how well they complement business. A business needs its customers and a landscape business, particularly one with trees, large mature ones, is much, much more attractive to shoppers. People perceive landscaped and tree-covered towns and shopping districts as much more likable than towns and shopping without. The general perception is not only that businesses are nicer, but that their goods are better than those places without trees and landscaping. And it only gets better from here. People will also travel longer distances to shop in tree-covered areas. Businesses preferentially locate in storefronts with trees. Plus, there is good evidence to believe that shoppers will pay more for goods purchased in a tree-covered area. Real estate also benefits by trees. Ask a realtor. They'll tell you that property with large trees that are well tended in front of a home will be looked at by more buyers than a home without trees. Trees actually add value to a home's purchase price or rent dollars to a rental property. So we've talked quite a bit about what the trees are doing for town and its businesses, helping out, saving money, making money and whatnot. But what about us? People are the most important part. We're the modern people walking on streets and driving cars. Our ancestors may have carved our civilization out of the forest, but we hardly have a thing to do with trees in our everyday lives now. Well, it turns out that we may have come out of the forest, but we never stop needing trees. Trees protect our air quality. The more people we have living close together, the more air pollution there is. We almost all have to drive a car, our houses burn gas, most of us have a fireplace or grill, and many businesses have to release some sort of smoke. Trees help with these sorts of pollution in two ways. First, particles suspended in the air. Everything from dust to metals gets stuck to tree surfaces. The leaves, branches, and trunks actually strain the air, making it more breathable. Second, trees inhale the air to use carbon dioxide to make sugar. This is how trees make their living. In the process of taking in the carbon dioxide, they also take in other gases released during any burning, making the air safer to breathe. Neighborhoods with more large trees actually have lower incidences of asthma than areas with few or no trees. So people really need trees. Having some trees around you actually helps make you healthier, mentally and physically. There's been quite a bit of research done about trees and people's health. The greatest benefit of trees, especially in towns and cities, is getting folks to come outside. We like walking in the shade of trees, we like sitting in the shade of trees. We tend to gather under the trees whenever we're outside. This has amazing effects on the community. Neighborhoods with trees have more sense of community, and people living there know one another better. People go outside more and tend to be healthier. Hospitals with trees and landscapes at least visible to the patients inside have shorter recovery times with fewer complications than hospitals without them. On top of that, the effect trees have on our mental state is amazing. We relax more around trees. Research in Chicago demonstrated that public housing projects with trees and landscapes had less domestic violence and crime and much happier residents than projects without trees. 
Further research shows that patients with mental illnesses make improvements when they are exposed to landscapes with trees. So you see, we're actually tree people. The more trees we have, the better we keep them, the better off our communities and ourselves are. Trees provide benefits from cooling our land and homes to actually saving or making money to keeping us all in much happier states. So you see, why trees really does seem like a strange question after all, doesn't it? The real question is, why not more trees?